G'day viewers, it's Andrew Scott here. I'll start with a disclaimer. The purpose of this video is to enlighten my VCE psychology students of the neural basis of learning. So therefore, I am focusing on the key knowledge required for this component of the study design. I hope it's of use. In this clip, we're going to focus on the function of dendrites, axons, neurotransmitters in the synapse, and we're going to look at how these entities change as a result of memory formation. Dendrites contain specialised receptor sites which receive incoming messages conveyed via neurotransmitters. So they collect information. The cell body integrates this information and if there's enough activity, an electrical impulse will be generated and conveyed by the long slender projection, the axon and at the end of the axon, we have the axon terminals, which will potentially send outgoing messages via neurotransmitters. So here's a close-up, more detailed version of the previous slide. Now, because the axon terminal on the presynaptic neuron doesn't make physical contact with a dendrite on the postsynaptic neuron, there needs to be a mechanism for conveying a message from neuron to neuron in order for memory formation to occur. And this all happens via the gap, the junction, which is the synapse. So we get an action potential, which will potentially hit one of the vesicles, which is the storage site for neurotransmitters in the axon terminals. And this will trigger a release of neurotransmitters, which are the messengers, into the synapse. Now some of these will bind with the specialised receptors on the dendrites of the postsynaptic neuron. So here we've got some glutamide being released from the presynaptic neuron, binding with the receptor sites, the NMDA receptor on the postsynaptic neuron. And what this will do, it, it will open up the channels for deposits of charged ions such as calcium and sodium to enter the postsynaptic neuron. Now, ultimately, we can end up with a phenomena known as synaptic plasticity, the brain's ability to rewire itself, which enables us to learn new skills over the lifespan. So let's look at three physical changes that occur as a result of memory formation. So the first one is dendritic growth. Now, we've already talked about dendrites containing the receptor sites which receive and collect and gather the incoming messages. So as a result of memory formation and regular revisitation of that memory, we can create new receptor sites. Not only that, but we get the dendritic branching. So therefore, we've got more antennas to receive these incoming messages. Secondly, we can have additional neurotransmitters released from the presynaptic neuron. So not only do we have more receptor sites as a result of that dendritic growth, but we all we have more electrochemical messages sent in the form of these neurotransmitters, which again enhances, I guess, the efficiency of the retrieval of these long-term memories. And thirdly, we get LTP, long-term potentiation, which refers to the long-lasting enhancement of synaptic transmission that occurs by regular revisitation of these declarative memories, which means that we've got this very efficient neural trace that when activated enables for us to easily retrieve stuff like somebody's name, a password, a mathematical rule, etc.